Last lesson I'll learn in this life is a fine art. Let it. Beautiful, Steve. That was excellent. Well, I got a little feedback there today. Can you? There we go. Thank you, Charles. Well, good morning, everyone, and happy New Year. I haven't seen you since last year. Some of you, so it's too long. <laughs> Great to see you, all of you, and thank you for being here. Well, <clears throat> in Romans chapter fourteen, verse nineteen, it says, "Let us pursue what makes for peace." and for mutual upbuilding. Let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. I think this is a wonderful time of year for us to really think about and to reflect on what it is that we are pursuing in life and where we're going and what direction we're wanting to go and what direction we're wanting to move away from. And that's a really a big part of what this ceremony is about. It's a really about moving into a space of releasing those things that are no longer serving us in life. And we're not just talking about, uh, and, uh, and probably especially not talking about trying to release necessarily outer things, but more than anything, releasing a lot of those inner things that are in the process of generating outer things that we don't want anymore. Make sense? So um, I was reading in Philippians 3, 13 through 14. My brethren, I do not consider that I have reached the goal, but this one thing I do know. Forgetting those things which are behind, I strive for those things which are before me. I press toward the goal to receive the prize of victory, of God's highest calling through Jesus Christ. And so what we're here to do today is to really move into an awareness of moving into an, a, a, a deeper and a richer experience of a unique nature that is within every one of us, that Christ within, that, that spirit of God that's within every one of us, and begin uh, and participate in a process of letting go of those things that get in the way of that. Anybody think, know about that, the stuff that gets in the way of that? Yeah, we all have little things in our awareness that tend to block us from being able to accept the truth of our being our true nature. One of my favorite <clears throat> stories this time of year is a story about a man who's walking along and walking up in the mountains and the hills and he falls off of a cliff and he was able to grab hold of a branch and he's sitting there hanging on a branch and as he's sitting there hanging on the branch he's, he's just terrified and he says, oh God, please help me, please help me. And he hears this voice from up above and it says, I'm here. And he says, oh, oh, good. Oh, God, help me, help me, please. And he said, heard the voice, and the voice says, let go. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's going, oh, oh, but uh, if I let go, I'm going to fall. I'm going to die, you know? And he said, please, dear God, please help me. And he hears the voice again, and the voice says, I am the Lord your God, let go. Is there anybody else up there? <laughs> Does that seem, uh, anybody resemble that remark? <laughs> Part of uh, the process of spiritual growth is really more like taking away those things that get in the way of our truly being the essence of who and what we are. You and I are created in the image and after the likeness of the divine. We are here to be spiritual lights, and we are spiritual lights. And there are things that kind of come up within us that don't recognize that and don't acknowledge that and are not in harmony and alignment with that. And those things that tend to get in the way of that are really internal thoughts and feelings and belief systems that really block us from really seeing that true light. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. I don't know if anybody here believes that, but that's what he said. You are the light of the world. He didn't necessarily, he said, I am the light of the world, certainly. But he also said, you are the light of the world. 
I think there's way too much emphasis sometimes on Jesus being the light of the world and not having that awareness and that responsibility of accepting that you and I are created and also a part of that light of the world. And that we're, that's, we're here to do that, to be that for each other, to reach out in a way that really makes a difference, to really be that light in ways that are special and unique to us that really no one else can do. And so part of this service and this ceremony is learning to align, realign ourselves, to realign the energy of our hearts and our minds and our spirits with the possibilities of a greater good, with the possibilities of having that kind of positive effect and impact, not only on ourselves, but also others in our world, those around us. It's a great time of, of releasing a lot of those things that tend to uh, keep us stuck. Anybody ever experienced feeling stuck before? Yeah, we all do. We all get in these patterns, don't we? And the places that we get stuck are generally between here and here. Wouldn't you agree? And so this is a wonderful, very powerful spiritual process for releasing a lot of what gets in the way of here and here. What gets in the way oftentimes is a way of, um, we, we think it's a way of protecting ourselves, but what we don't realize is that that which we hold on to, those things that we block in our conscious and our awareness, really are not necessarily protecting us, but they're actually helping us to stay stuck in our habitual patterns. And uh, we all have them. We all have habitual patterns, and there's nothing wrong with having habitual patterns. If we, if, we, if we get into condemning ourselves because we have habitual patterns, that's just another habitual pattern, isn't it? <laughs> and so the idea is not to necessarily judge or criticize or condemn ourselves for having these, exp these patterns, but to really shine light on them, to look at them in a way that allows us to see what is the possibility of good that can come out of those and what is it that we need to release and let go in order to experience a greater good. Sometimes we have to be willing to let go of the good in order to experience the better. That's one of the most powerful spiritual principles I think that we can learn in this, this community. Is sometimes we are, are in a place where we want to experience a greater good in our lives, but in order to do that, we have to move from point A to point B. You can't live in point A and also live in point B, can you? And so in order to get where you want to be in terms of your own awareness and experience in life, you have to be willing to let go of where you are. Now, where you are can, is, it can be wonderful. And one of the ways you let go of where you are is simply setting your intentions to be more uh, in uh, an awareness of what the possibilities are and be willing to accept and let go of those things that are holding you back. Harry Emerson Fosdick says, He who cannot rest cannot work. He who cannot let go cannot hold on. And so part of our unfoldment is that awareness of the process of letting go. And that, that's part of this wonderful ceremony today. Walter Lippmann says, If you want peace of mind, resign as general manager of the universe. <laughs> what? I mean, the whole place would fall apart if I wasn't in charge, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's what we, our little ego mind thinks. And there's a little part of us that really does believe that there's some truth in that, that we have to be in, responsible for and in charge of and hold on to every little thing. But the reality is our spiritual growth is really more like, and sometimes it's like peeling layers of an onion, isn't it? I mean, we do have a few tears when we have to let go of those things that we tend to treasure about ourselves, you know, the little things that we tend to use to protect our our idea and our ego uh, awareness about who and what we are, those belief systems that we have about who we are. But in order to really experience that divine nature, the wholeness of who we are, the truth of our real unique being, we have to be open to the possibility that who we think we are is not who we are. Sometimes who we think we are gets in the way of our true nature. Ellen Boyd says, to get the best gas mileage, an expert suggests don't drive around with a trunk full of junk. <laughs> know what we're talking about? So <clears throat> when we are surrendering, and, and a lot of times people have a, a difficulty with the idea of surrender, but uh, when we are surrendering, we don't sacrifice anything. We only lose whatever is keeping us in that same place. 
Ashley Brilliant says, don't cry, nothing really lo is ever lost. Everything that ever happened is still safely back there in the past. <laughs> so you're really not going to lose anything by letting go. It's always still there in the past, and if you want to go back and revisit that, you can. The trick is not to live there, isn't it? So we're going to go through a process that allows us to move into an experience of being more real and more honest and more present with ourselves. I came across a quote this week from the Buddha, and I'm not sure it's an exact quote, so I'm going to paraphrase it, but um, he basically said something of the nature that if you are experiencing or feeling anxiety, you're living in the future. And if you're experiencing or feeling sad or depressed, you're living in the past. If you want to experience peace, live now. And there are things that there's seven or eight different areas of our lives that most of our thoughts tend to get engaged in and get caught up in and that we tend to identify with that keep us out of the experience of living in the present. And we're going to go through a little process in, in learning ways of letting go and, and releasing those so that we can truly experience more of that unique, special nature that is within the heart of all of us. Before we get into that, I wanted to share with you, there's a wonderful story <clears throat> about the natives of Borneo, and they have a foolproof method for, for capturing mon monkeys. Anybody know about monkeys? We talk a lot here about the monkey mind. Sound? So they built uh, basically a bamboo cage with spaces between the bars just wide enough that the monkey's arm will go through. And, and after that, they put a banana in it, and in the cage. And the natives will then patiently sit there and wait for the monkeys to come along. And the monkeys will come along, and they will reach their hands inside of the cage and grab the banana. And they then are, know that they've caught the monkey, because the monkey will not let go of the banana. And so they simply walk up and capture the monkey, because the monkey will not let go of the banana. Anybody see the resemblance to this? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? There are thoughts that go on in our awareness that will not let go of what we think is good, what we think is a treat for us, what we think is worthwhile for us. And so part of this is a process of learning to open our hands and let go of what we think is good so that we're not necessarily going to get caught up in our monkey mind. I thought that was a really very, for me, a very valuable image <laughs> that sometimes I can see my monkey mind getting caught up in what I think ought to be, the way I think it should be, the way I think it's supposed to be. Anybody know that one? Yeah. We all know how it's supposed to be, don't we? But the reality is, if we're really caught up in this belief system of how we think it's supposed to be, then we're not really experiencing the possibilities of what really is and what can be. And so part of our unfoldment is learning how to open our hands, open our hearts, open our minds to the greater possibilities of good. So at this time, I want to invite you to pull out a piece of paper. We have here a tiny little piece of paper. And if, if you don't have a pen, please raise your hand. Our rushers will bring you a pen. We'll need someone who, a, you'll need a pen or a pencil or something to write on. <coughs> There's some in the front right here, Carrie. There's one in the back, need one in the back. Would someone tear their sheet in half? There we go. And if someone would share, uh, if there's someone doesn't have one, you can tear one in half. There's another extra one over there. Okay. Perfect. You only need one, and it doesn't need to be big. Trust me. Oh, guess what? I have two here also. Here's, here's an extra. They're manifest. They're they're multiplying. All right. <laughs> They're multiplying. That's wonderful. Yay. <laughs> so 
So on this little piece of paper, uh, I want to read to you a quote from Charles Fillmore. He says, the action of the mind on the body is, some of, is in some of its aspects similar to that of water on the earth. Living old thoughts over and over keeps the inlet of the new thoughts closed. Then begins crystallization, which Materia Medica has named arteriosclerosis. That's easy for me to say, right? Arteriosclerosis. A little, little, I had to practice that one. So what I'm going to invite you to do is on this little piece of paper, I'm going to take you through um, a series of thoughts and awarenesses that I'm going to invite you to be willing to release, to let go. And as you are uh, writing these down, I want you to notice that this piece of paper, you notice that it's a very small piece of paper? And there's a reason for that, because we really don't make a big thing out of this. We have a tendency to put a lot of energy into the challenges and the difficulties, don't we? And so what I'm going to invite you to do is think about those things that over this next year that you would like to be let go of. And don't write, um, this is not, you know, the, the great American novel. <laughs> what I'm inviting you to do is write a word or a phrase that really represents that which you would like to release in your life. Things that are not necessarily working for you. And then really think about what would be something inside of you in your thinking or your feeling or your belief systems or your patterns that might be contributing to that thing that you're not wanting to experience anymore. You, you, you're hearing what I'm saying? So it's not just thinking about outer experiences that you want to let go of. Yes, you can put that down. But what would be something that might be contributing to that staying around and be willing to let that go? So we'll take it to another level. Rather than just simply look at the experiences, what is it about that experience in me is maintaining that in my life or keeping me stuck in that in my life? And am I willing to let that go? So write down just simply a word or a phrase, whatever really comes to your awareness as we go through this. And I'm going to invite you to take a, a deep breath. And uh, Steve, I'm going to ask you to come up and maybe do a little strumming for us. Would you do that? Sorry. We'll, have, we'll give you an opportunity to do this a little bit later. All right, so <clears throat> today we're going to focus on and release and think about those things in our lives that are simply past experiences. Are there any past experiences that seem to keep coming back to you, that seem to keep you stuck, that seem to keep you blocked? Anything from your past? And as I mentioned that idea, the, the thought of past experiences, just notice if any image came to your mind or some awareness that came to you, and then just put a word down that might represent that experience for you, that might keep coming back to you in different circumstances. Now I'd like to invite you to consider any thoughts that come to you about the future. Anything about the future that seems to concern you or you feel perhaps a little anxious about. Anything that you are uh, uh, feeling even fearful about perhaps or just uncertain about. Just take a moment and just put a word or phrase that would represent any thoughts that are holding you 
about the future. Could be in the form of uh, one of those uh, someday aisle thoughts, also. You know those someday I'll. <laughs> I invite you to think about any fears. This is probably related in some ways, but any fears that you might be experiencing. Any thoughts of fear? Any fears that? really seem to come to you from the past, perhaps, or that you're projecting into the future. Next, I invite you to reflect on any negative or limiting thoughts or emotions that might be patterns, things that you tend to experience more than a few times a day or a week. What tends to be your predominant emotional energy, energies that you tend to come back to when things become challenging or difficult for you? it's anger, perhaps it's frustration, perhaps it's fear, perhaps it is confusion. Just put a word or phrase down again. We don't need a uh, great American novel here, just a word or two. you to reflect on limiting beliefs, things that you have thought or said about yourself that are perhaps keeping you stuck in a place that someone said you should be or someone labeled you or you even labeled yourself. Any words that start with, I can't. <laughs> Just take a second and think about any of those that tend to roll through your mind or heart or that you tend to respond more in a habitual way. Maybe it's something like, well, no one else does that, or I couldn't do that. Or maybe everyone else could do that, but not me. Anybody know any of those? So take a moment and just write a word or phrase that limits you in some way. Keep it so short and sweet. <laughs> Think about now your physical body. Are there thoughts about your physical body that are not serving you, that are not really reflecting the life and the health and the wholeness of spirit that is in you?
These are thoughts that tend to keep us caught up in either the past or the future or the what ifs or the if onlys. Take a moment now to think about human relationships. What are the thoughts and energies, the fears, the doubts, the confusions, whatever that might be there for human relations that are not serving, that are not really expressing what you want to know and feel and experience in your human relationships? And just put a word or phrase on that. And then another one that tends to get us hung up and caught up on in different places at times is think about your finances. Think about the finances in your life and any thought patterns or feelings or anything that would manifest or bring forth things that you don't truly want to experience in your financial life. Notice if there's a word or phrase that comes to you about that. The burning bowl you have before us is representative of the presence of the Christ within. That light that Jesus reflected and shone and that is within each and every one of us in possibility and potential. That light we refer to as the Christ light and it is a light that heals and transforms, that uplifts, and that frees our whole being into experiencing more of the divine in all aspects of our nature and being, in our wholeness. So I invite you to take a moment and observe and see the light of the bowl, in the bowl that's before you here. And in your own heart and mind, take a second and close your eyes and hold this small piece of paper in your heart. And in your heart, I invite you to affirm with me. I release all of my past experiences to the Christ light within me. Together, I release all my past experiences to the Christ light within me. And just notice and see and feel that transformation and the release of that energy of those past experiences. I release all of my future to the Christ light within me. Together, I release all of my future to the Christ light within me. I release all of my fears to the Christ light within me. I release all of my fears to the Christ light within me. I release all of my negative thoughts and emotions to the Christ light within me. I release all of my negative thoughts and emotions to the Christ light within me. I release all of my limiting or judgmental thoughts and beliefs to the Christ light within me. I release all of my negative thoughts and beliefs, and beliefs to the Christ light within me. I release my physical being to the Christ light within me. I release my physical being to the Christ light within me. 
I release my human relationships to the Christ light within me. I release my human And I release all of my finances to the Christ light within me. I release all of my finances to the Christ light within me. I release my whole being to the Christ light within me. I release my whole being to the Christ light within me. Just breathe that in and out now. Now you're going to be invited to come forward and we'll invite you to come down the center row and if you will come down the middle and then return by to your seat by the outside row and as you come forward this is a meditative and reflective experience it's an agreement that you're making with your soul it's an agreement that you're making with the Spirit of God within you to give you the opportunity and the experiences that will assist you and releasing those things that have been holding you in a place of stuckness, that have been holding you in a place of limitation. And as you come forward, you're gonna be invited to bring that small piece of paper. And as you come forward, simply very gently touch it to the flame and release it into the bowl. Now, I wanna encourage you and caution you that this is a flammable material. So it will flash. So I don't want you to be too uh, startled but I want you to be sure that when you're doing this, that you really are letting it go. That's important. Because we don't want it to come back and burn you. Right? And so there's a very good metaphysical reason for letting it go. And so as you come forward, gently come forward, and uh, I'll ask Steve to continue to play for us. We'll invite you to come forward and gently release it to the, to the bowl and give everybody an opportunity. And as you're doing that, I invite you to not only consider and see and experience your own thoughts and, and patterns being released into that Christ light, but as each one does this, send a blessing to them and see them experiencing that releasing for themselves and see them experiencing that transformation of that energy into a higher, finer, more beautiful awareness and experience of the divine nature that's within them. And so I invite you to come forward from the very, these front rows, go ahead and come forward and, and light your... Go ahead, Julie. This man's experienced. Perfect. It's okay. This time now, <clears throat> we have released these into the Christ light, and they are in the process of being transformed. And this is a wonderful symbolism, and it gives a message to our subconscious mind and to our spirit that this is truly something we want to release and let go of. Now, the thing about that is, you know, no energy is ever lost, right? You know that. It's all energy. These are thoughts and words, but they all have a vibration. And so it's so important for us to reestablish what it is that we want that energy directed into. And so now we have an opportunity to consider and think about this next six months to a year 
and what it is that we want to experience in these areas of our lives. And so you have another piece of paper there. And I'm going to invite you to, on the very top of that piece of paper, take a moment. And we're going to write a letter to the divine. We're going to write a letter to God. And so I invite you to write at the very top of the page and whatever, uh, write dear either God or spirit or whatever <laughs> word really represents the divine to you. And we're going to write this as a letter of gratitude. It's a letter of gratitude for those experiences that we, at this time, want to experience, but six months from now, you've already experienced them. In other words, dear God, thank you for, and then think about what it is that you want to experience over this next six months, and write it in the present tense as if it is already done. It's already so. Dear God, thank you for, and think about maybe a healing of a past experience. Or dear God, thank you for confidence and faith in the future. Dear God, thank you that I have released the fear of Thank you, God, for the peaceful thoughts and feelings and emotions. These are just examples I'm giving you. Don't write, you can write those if you wish, but, but uh, write your own words. Dear God, thank you for release, I've released this limiting belief. I no longer believe that. Dear God, thank you. I think about your physical being. I am experiencing health and wholeness, or I'm at my, thank you, God, I'm at my optimum healthy weight, or I'm eating good healthy foods and being active, or I'm just feeling good about me. Thank you, God, for. the love and the blessings I experience in my human relationships, the healings. Thank you, God, for the abundance and order in my finances. Use your own words, but reflect on putting a positive energy into those areas that we've now released.
at this time I invite you to actually put a comma at the end. Just a comma, not a period. Because there's more. But if you will, go ahead and sign your name. You can sign it with love or sincerely or however you want to sign it. And then if you will, fold it up and place it in the envelope. And we want you to put your name and address on the outside of the envelope. And seal it. And when we do our offering, we're going to invite you to make this a part of your offering. We're going to invite you to drop this in the offering basket. Now, no one else is going to read this. We're not going to open them. No one's going to see these. But in six months, we're going to put a stamp on it, and we're going to send it back to you. And it's amazing to me how many people report the wonderful things that they've experienced as they read the letter six months out, and the things that really have come about for them as a part of this process. And so I invite you to seal it up with your name and address on it.